What's going on guys? I'm excited to talk on this topic and I'm excited to be doing this video because I know a lot of my subscribers, I have very smart subscribers, a lot of you guys are in university right now and you could possibly be facing this decision or you might just be curious and want to know the difference between an MD versus a PhD. And if you're new and you stumbled upon my channel because of this video, what is going on? My name is Stephanie and I have a PhD in pathology and cell biology and my research focused on ovarian cancer, specifically early detection biomarkers and molecular mechanisms of disease. And welcome to my YouTube channel. However, this YouTube channel, I predominantly focus on health and fitness. And this video topic might be a controversial topic, so I'm going to propose the question and answer it empirically with facts, tangible numbers, and statistics first. And then after that, I will shed a little bit of light on my personal opinion just based off of my own personal experience. There will be timestamps in the description box below if there's something particular that you're curious about so take a look at the description box it'll all be listed there and I also have some notes here so I might be looking down at times because there's a lot to get through but before we get started I'd like to give a huge shout out to the great courses plus for supporting this video this is a second video of mine that they've supported so thank you so so much it really helps my channel and if you're unfamiliar with the great courses plus they are an on-demand video learning subscription service with incredible top-notch professors from around the world and with this service you can get unlimited access to over 8,000 courses in things like math history playing chess or even learning how to cook. I've previously taken a few photography courses, but I'm currently interested and been taking the course English Grammar Boot Camp, which I really wish I had taken while I was writing my dissertation because as you know, I'm a scientist, I am not a writer, so it's been really helpful with all the writing that I do. And The Great Courses Plus is kindly offering my subscribers a free month of unlimited access. So if you're interested in getting a free month trial, you can start your free trial today by going to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash buttermore or you can click the first link in the description box below. On to the video topic, MD versus PhD. And to start, an accurate description of both should be laid out. As a medical student, you are following a course of study through books and hands-on experience to qualify and practice as a doctor of medicine. And as a PhD or doctoral student, you are awarded a doctorate based off of your original research, research that has never been shown before. And you've completed a dissertation that has to be approved by a board of professors, otherwise known as a committee. And of course, generally speaking, MDs will go on to be practicing physicians or clinicians and PhD PhDs, if they follow the road of academia, will generally become professors. And there's a lot of caveats to that, which we will get into later, but that is the classical pathway. Med school is comprised of four years of study, which the first two are composed of predominantly book work and lecture, and you learn the art of medicine. However, the last two years, you actually spend with hands-on experience doing your clinical rotations. From there, you will apply to a residency program where you will hopefully match with the residency program of your choice, which can last between three and six years depending on your specialty, and you can even further specialize your training with a one to three year fellowship. Graduate school or doing a PhD has a much less rigid structure and can take on average about six years to complete. And this time varies depending on your discipline, the university, your mentor, and of course the complexity of your project and the country you live in. And not all doctorate programs are like this, but from my experience, most of them are comprised of the first two years of the fundamental framework for all of your scientific background. So you will do a lot of coursework and lecture-based classes, which is similar to med school, but it is less focused on the clinical component and more so on experimental design, grant writing, writing for publications, and public speaking. During your coursework, you are concurrently rotating in labs if you haven't already decided on a lab before you join the university. So you're rotating in different labs to find your home lab from which you would then carry out the rest of your time doing your PhD. You and your now new mentor will decide on a dissertation project that is centered around a central hypothesis and you will generally have specific aims for which you will use a variety of methods to tackle your hypothesis. And once you've completed this, and again, for which the time is highly variable, you will then defend it in an oral presentation and then you will be examined by a board of professors, otherwise known as your committee who also specialize in your discipline. So what happens after each? So after med school and then residency and potentially a fellowship, you will usually begin practicing as a board certified physician. And after a PhD, you generally will pursue a postdoctoral fellowship, which can last between one and actually many years, 
which we can get into a little bit later, and can sometimes carry over into doing more than one postdoctoral fellowship. During your time as a postdoc, you will be perfecting and refining your skills as a scientist, and from there, you can hope to aspire to become an assistant professor and getting hired by a university to then move up the ranks to associate and then full professor, or after your postdoc, you can pursue an industry-based position, possibly doing research in the field of pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, or become a medical science liaison, etc. Now let's get into the nitty gritty numbers. So what is the average debt accumulated for an MD versus the average debt accumulated for a PhD? But first I'm gonna look at cost. And strictly speaking in terms of the programs on their own, according to the Association of American Medical Colleges, for one year at a public in-state medical school, the average cost was roughly $35,000. And for out-of-state, it was roughly $58,000. Tuition and fees at a private school averaged well over $50,000. So if you account for all four years of medical school in-state is about $138,000, and out-of-state and private school is about $230,000 or greater. So including the money that you need for cost of living, rent, books, and your tuition, of course, reports indicate that the average med student will leave with a loan debt of about $200,000 to $300,000. Again, not including any prior educational costs. And now for a PhD. And if you're curious about all the costs that I accrued and the debt of my own education, I do have a whole video on it called How Much Did My PhD Cost? which I will link in the cards above my head. So go ahead and watch that if you're interested. But strictly speaking for the program on its own for a PhD, in my experience will generally cover your tuition and also offer you a stipend, a yearly stipend of about $26,000. However, $26,000 is usually not enough. So over the course, of those five to six years that you're in grad school, you can rack up a hefty loan. Reports range really widely on this one, as little as $10,000 in loan debt and can go all the way up to on average $200,000. And that is very individual. And it also factors into some people also had other dependents that they were caring for, like children and spouses. Next, average income. Now that you have all this debt, how do you pay it back? It's probably no surprise that a physician makes a good salary, and it's also probably no surprise that it actually widely varies based on your specialty. During your residency, the average income of a resident for the duration that you're there is about $55,000. And then you'll move on to a full physician salary, which has a steep range, $160,000 for a general practitioner to almost $700,000 a year for neurological surgery. Now, the average income of a PhD is a little bit tricky because there are a lot of different paths you can take as a PhD, but going the most common path by pursuing a postdoctoral fellowship the average postdoc in the US makes about $43,000 a year. After you finish your time as a postdoc and hopefully land a position as an assistant professor, you'll make roughly $70,000 a year, and you can then aspire to become a full professor making about $118,000 a year. And outside of academia, reports show that a biotechnician or a medical science liaison makes about $100,000 to $112,000 a year. And of course, this is highly variable. This is just average. It depends on what institution, company, how long you've been with the company, and of course, what country you live in. Okay, so now let's talk about job success rate. How successful are you at obtaining employment after graduating from school? Something that I found really interesting while I was preparing for this video was that in 2016, out of all the graduates who were applying for residency, in addition to international students that were also applying to residency, almost 30% of those graduates did not match for a residency program. Now, I don't have the exact statistics on what happens to those 30% of graduates. They may try to rematch again next year. But for the 70% of the people who did get a residency, employment's actually very high, reporting only 1% were unemployed. So 99% of them after they completed residency found employment. Another report indicated that over the next 10 years, there's going to be a 15% increase in job demand for physicians and surgeons. Not only are you likely to have a job after you finish residency, but it seems like employment opportunities are only increasing. And unfortunately, this 
statistics for a PhD graduate is a little bit more grim. In a 2014 report, only 57% of PhD graduates surveyed that they had a job after graduation, and that was also including people who said they had acquired a postdoc. Only 15 to 20% of postdocs will actually obtain a tenure track academic position. And with a staggering rise of postdocs, with an increase of about 150% of postdocs now from the year 2000 to present, there are a ton of postdocs that still have not found positions at an academic institution. Those other PhD graduates jumped straight into the workforce or they decided to apply their skills onto new adventures. And lastly, I'd like to shed my own opinion on the matter as somebody who has obtained multiple master's degrees and my own PhD who has worked side by side with MD students as well as practicing MDs. And of course, this is gonna be no surprise. There are a lot of things to consider when you are choosing professional school and of course do your own research. But from my experience, something that you really have to consider is how you would like to spend the rest of your time on earth. And that could be either preventing and treating disease as an MD or being at the forefront of research trying to cure disease. You also have to consider things like your personality type, your desired income, quality of life, and chances of you getting a job after your education. But most importantly, you really have to consider where your true passion lies. As a doctoral student, I personally enjoyed conducting science to answer my own curiosities and have the freedom to exercise scientific experiments to answer the questions questions that nobody knows yet. I also like the independence and self-sufficiency that comes with doing a PhD, as well as practical problem solving and critical thinking skills, things that I find invaluable to my future. However, this may come at a cost. In my personal opinion, I think a job in this field is very difficult to obtain. And in contrast with all things equal, if you are on the fence between the two paths, I will generally recommend the path of going to med school because you may find that treating patients is your true calling. And if it's not, research or teaching is always a viable option to you as an MD. And on the contrary, I will typically recommend for someone to pursue a PhD if they really love science, they're not a people person, and they really have a strong passion for research. So that is all I have for you. I really hope that this video was helpful if you were on the fence about your professional path. And please let me know in the comment section below if you like more academic focused videos. If you are new, please subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.